We're going to take you from an acoustic vocal performance all the way through a fully produced Nashville song demo. Since Austin flew in from Colorado, we're getting together a couple hours before the downbeat to go over the song and write a chart for the players. When producing a song demo, first and foremost, it's about the song. It's about the content, the structure, the melody, and above all, are you telling a story that someone is going to want to hear? As Austin's playing the song, I write a Nashville number chart. So if you had a C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. Yeah, the intro might be long. I think it might I go ahead and edit the features. chart and shorten yeah, the intro to eight bars. Bag. It is a female vocal, yeah, right? That's okay. Right, yeah. We will need to key the song much higher so it will be in the range of a female singer. Something like that. Into the six minors yeah. then. Austin yeah. has an yeah. idea for a lick on the beginning of the song. He wants all the musicians to play the same notes at the same time. That's a gang lick, and that's out of style, and that's not happening. Instead of a gang lick, I suggest a four down, four up intro. We'll see if it works. Our down beats at two o'clock, so we've got some work to do. You'd be surprised what can slip through the cracks, and the time to catch it is now before the people are around to notice. I always do a walk through the studio to confirm all the mics are set up, all musicians have headphone boxes, music stands, and anything they may need for the session. You can trust a second engineer to do this for you, but at the end of the day, the client is going to look to you if something does go wrong. Musicians are rolling in. That means it's time to start getting sounds. I start with the drums. I like to make sure we get a good tight sound and a good headphone mix. All right, give me just the cymbals for me, Steve. They move on through the rhythm section, next to the bass, get a good level, dial in a little compression. Next we move to the piano. Get a good level, make sure our EQ's right and we're not hitting anything too hard. The acoustic player was here, so we went ahead and set him up. Got the mics where they needed to be, got a good level. With the steel, it's really straight ahead, just put a mic up, let him do his thing. As usual, the electric player's late. When I'm getting sounds at this point, all I'm concerned about is getting a good clean signal, that the mic is in the right place, we're not getting too much compression, and we have a good level. I know when we count it off, things are gonna change. Now let's get the musicians in the control room and listen to the song. What's important here is that we get the feel of the song, that the guys confirm the chart is written correctly, and to pick up on any musical hooks, Sometimes we have to change the chart. A couple of the guys have a really unique way of doing that. It's time to saddle up. This is where the fun starts. First pass is gonna tell us a lot that we need to know. Let's count it off. Right away, I see several problems we're gonna to need to fix. The tempo is just way too slow. We have to raise it up at least eight beats a minute. Secondly, my idea for a four down, four up intro is not gonna work. Sometimes it's better to wait until the musicians do their thing to give your ideas. Let's take this stuff uh, one at a time here. But... Drummer was playing a strange tom part in the intro and turn around that I didn't care for much, so we'll have him take that out. Do some high tom too there, Pocahontas. And the guys forgot to split the solo, so I'll gently remind Russ that he gets the first half. All right. It's time for another take. Let's count it off. Yeah. Right away, I know it's a lot better. The new tempo is spot on, and that electric hook is killing it from the top. And I love the way the drums play the tom groove in the bridge this time. This is definitely the take. Let's add some more parts. It's time for overdubs. You ready? Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, guys, so let's okay, do a little, little overdub. John's initial pass had a lot of modulation, a lot of effects. So for the second pass, I want John to use a heavier tone with a more traditional clean amp overdrive. I'd also like Tony to jump from the B3 over to the piano and 
add some sparkle to the track. I really find the mandolin sits well with a female vocal. We got a great track. Of course, Kelly's right on time, so let's bring her in the control room and listen down. Let's check it out. Let's just. Ah. Let's start that again from yeah. the top. Uh, bring it. We had to adjust the melody a little for the key of the song. We also adjusted some of the phonetics between the I and E sounds. I think we got it all worked out. Now let's try some mics. I like to audition to three main types of microphones on all singers. We start with a dynamic, a condenser, and then a tube condenser. I've decided to use the U87, the old standard. Let's do some takes. All right, Kelly, you ready? Let's try this first verse. I'll give you half the intro. Okie dokie. All right. We've said hello every day. With a demo vocal, we're more concerned about conveying the melody and the lyric of the song than we are about creating a pristine radio ready vocal. After all, time is money. We don't have all day to get the vocal. But what do you say before you hang up the phone? Sorry, I was too busy breathing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the song. The song's all about the vocal. You can have a great singer and a great song, but it's the producer's job to bring the two together. Mixing can be fun. Most of the time, it's not. I have a minimum of four speaker setups at any time going. Each one will sound completely different from the other. The trick is to make the mix sound great on the big speakers and then also when you're listening in mono on your iPhone. I use two main methods of mixing, analog summing and in the box. The analog summing gains me a little more stereo width. In the box mixing, I have a lot more control over automation and the recall is definitely much easier. The technical side of mixing is not difficult. Anyone can learn that. It's the art of mixing that's the real challenge. And if you're not second guessing yourself, then you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. All right, ready? I'm Dan Frizzell. I'm a producer, engineer, musician, occasional songwriter, most of all a fan of music. I've recorded. I'm Dan. <laughs> uh, now what? Some kind of light. Thanks for watching. Up yours. You know, don't t don't take any of my work. My kids need beer and cigarettes. Something like that. You know.